We all know dogs lead with their noses, but some noses are more refined than others. I'm here to spend the day with Ireland's only fisheries detection dog and maybe learn a thing or two from her. That dog's name is Ushi, and her handler is Maureen Byrne. They both work on the River Boyne catchment area for Inland Fisheries Ireland, the state agency responsible for both the country's inland fisheries and sea angling. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Helen. And hello, you? Ushi. How are you? So she's come ready for work. Um, you oh. put a uniform on her. I do. It's just an identification bib so that people know who she is. So this is business Ushi. Business <laughs> Ushi, not pet Ushi. Yeah, exactly. Working Ushi. 25 years ago, Maureen became the first woman in the country to be made a permanent fisheries protection officer. Her job involves patrolling this area with Ushi, looking for any sign of suspicious activity or evidence of illegal fishing. And she leads the way, doesn't she? She leads yeah. the way, yeah. 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 It's, I don't want to be getting in the way of the scent. Although highly trained, Ushi needs regular testing of her abilities to seek out anything that smells even faintly of fish. Ushi, go find. Go find. Go on. <gasps> yes, good girl. So if you find that, you definitely know there's illegal fishing oh, going there's, on. Oh, there's no such thing as a legal fishing net as such in fresh water. So if we find a net, we know that there's illegal activity happening in the area. They have them hidden close to where they're going to carry out the illegal acts. Uh, it just gives them less uh, of a distance to have to carry them and potentially be caught. Maureen is one of over 200 officers tasked with patrolling all of our rivers, streams and lakes, as well as the sea area up to 12 miles off the coast a huge undertaking. This is done using everything from kayaks and jet ski to drones and bicycles. Having Ushi as part of the team adds another weapon to their arsenal. Once you started working with the dog, did the amount of illegal activity you detect increase? Yes, we knew that there was illegal activity happening, particularly the, down at the coast. Uh, but the, the amount of nets we found surprised us quite a lot. We found nets that had been buried about two feet under the ground, under the sand dunes, and she still found them. We, we figured out that the, the poachers had realised that we had a, a tool at our disposal, that they couldn't hide their nets from too easily, but even, even burying them didn't work. In 2020, Inland Fisheries Ireland brought 119 cases to court for fishing offences, nearly double the figure for 2019. 250 illegal fishing nets were seized. Brian Beckett is a director with Inland Fisheries. Is there much large-scale illegal fishing going on? We don't think that there's a lot of very large-scale illegal fishing, but where that illegal fishing happens, it can be very, very damaging. Obviously, if you have a net that's, for example, 250 metres long, that net could intercept a large number of fish moving from the, the coastal environment into the river environment. And we can lose large numbers of fish in that kind of a scenario. What impact would that have then on the ecosystem of, of our rivers? Well, these are really sensitive populations. Um, salmon in particular are under real pressure. So what can happen is those fish don't get back into the river to spawn there's no next generation of fish coming back and therefore we lose an entire generation in, in that way, you know. So every single fish that we get returning to our shores in Ireland in terms of salmon is a really important fish and any salmon that gets into that river has a chance of reproducing and that's what we need for Ireland's nature and uh, natural heritage. Last year, Maureen and her husband Robert, who also works for Inland Fisheries, put Ushi into pup and two of her litter have been selected for training for this very specialised role. How unique is Ushi? Well, she's certainly the only uh, fisheries detection dog in Ireland, uh, probably the only one in Europe, and it's possible because I couldn't find any others across the world. There might be some out there, but I haven't found them. Ushi is a mommy? Ushi's mama, yeah. OK, and these are two of her puppies? That's two puppies, yeah. That's Turi and Kuro. They're right. six months old now. Why German Shepherds? Well, as a breed, they're very intelligent. They're very easy to train. They're very uh, predisposed to air scenting and ground scenting, which is the sort of thing we need them to do. So they're brilliant at what they do, and, they're, and it's easy to train them to, to, to do it for us. Fish is what they're sniffing out, so it's not too hard to, says me, uh, possibly to teach a dog to sniff out fish. It's not, no. It's about really harnessing their ability to do it so that they tell you they found it. But this is a job not without risk. 
Poachers mainly operate at night, and while Ushi is not here to protect Maureen, having her around is reassuring. Over the years, there would have been incidents that happened, uh, and between myself and my colleagues, there, there have been incidents with being held at gunpoint, being held at knife point, and a lot of verbal threats and people trying to punch you. Uh, now, I don't think any of us act have actually come to harm, but th th there is always a, a threat of, or a, a possibility of, of aggression in certain circumstances. Well, then possibly another advantage of having the dog with you is you probably feel a bit safer with the dog. There's no doubt there's been a couple of incidents now where, where uh, I have been threatened by people coming too close in, a, in an aggressive way and Ushi has just, just stood in the gap between us. Okay. And made just a difference. To, yeah, just, you know, it did make a difference because they backed off. But the work of inland fisheries is not confined to dealing with poaching. It also has a role in conserving and improving waterways, which sometimes involves undoing damage that was caused in the past. Probably the biggest, most physical damage would have been done by arterial drainage back in the 1960s, when a lot of the rivers around the country were deepened in order to, to prevent flooding of land. And whilst that might have worked to pre prevent flooding, it did a lot of damage to the aquatic habitat and took away an awful lot of, of habitat that is suitable for salmon spawning. Salmon numbers have really started to dwindle uh, in the last 20 years or so. So we're trying to fix that now and we're trying to restore that lost habitat. Have you seen things start to turn around at all? It, it, the turnaround when you do habitat restoration is extraordinarily fast. Uh, so you might do the restoration work during the summer months and the following winter you can see that there are salmon there spawning already and we've seen that. We, we started doing some big projects in the last couple of years and we can already see uh, an elevation in the number of salmon that are coming back to spawn. Does that give you great satisfaction? Fantastic. Uh, the, it, that's what it's all about.